Hello, everyone. Welcome back to my second part of Scampi tutorials. So we are going to continue our analysis for the single RNA sequencing data set for human and fibrotic lung. So first, we need to know the order dependencies. Then we can read the data we saved from part one after we perform the quality control analysis. So we can use the uh, read function to read the data into Python. So now it is very similar to the uh, throughout uh, analysis. First, uh, we perform um, the data normalization. So by a uh, perform this step analysis, we normalize the matrix data in X uh, to 10,000 rate per cell. So uh, in this way, the count became comparable among all the cells. So we can run uh, normalization. Then we need to do a next step of analysis to log randomize the data. Uh, in SURAT, if you run the data normalization, it uh, performs both step uh, normalization and the uh, log transformation. After data normalization, we can uh, find the uh, highly variable genes from this data set. We, the highly variable genes will be used to uh, connect the cells later. We can have a look at the highly variable genes in our data set. So you can see, uh, Use the plot function, we can see the highly variable genes, uh, black color dot are highly variable genes after data normalization and before data normalization. So we can set the data to raw uh, for later analysis in differential testing and the visualization of gene expression. When we need the raw data, we can just call this function raw to a data. Let's run uh, a data raw first. Then we can do the filtering to keep uh, the highly variable genes. If we run uh, this code, um, the data only have the gene names for the highly variable genes. Let's have a look at the A data again. You can see now uh, we have 4104 cells but uh, only a 1420 genes. That's because we only kept the, the highly variable genes for clustering the cells. So next we perform the uh, data regress out function. So here is the reason that why we need to do this step of analysis. This step analysis regret out effect of total count genes and also the percentage of mitochondria genes. Now we can scale the data. After data scaling, we can run principal component analysis. This is the same function run PCA in SURAT. So let's have a look use the plot function to see at the uh, PCA for um, the gene PDGFRA and the PDGFRB. So PDGFRA is the mark gene for fibroblast and the PDGFB is the mark gene for parasite and smooth muscle cells. 
Oh, we uh, the code is wrong. We can write again. Yeah. So you can see the expression of PDGFRA in these cells clusters. We know they are fibroblasts, and the high expression of PDGFRB in in this cell cluster, we know they are parasites and the smooth muscle cells. So we can have a look at the contribution of each PCs to the total variance in the data set. It's like we run elbow plot in SURAT to decide which PC is the best number for further cell clustering analysis. So now we can compute the neighbor graph with the default value. Uh, the default value will run in PC50. So now we can run UMAP to embed the graph in two dimensions using UMAP. So we performed the uh, dimensional reduction analysis PCA and uh, UMAP. Now we can find the uh, clusters. So we ScanP recommends use the Naden method. This is the similar function as throughout find the clusters. So we can run the analysis to find the cell clusters at resolution 0 0.2. I run this data set before. I found that 0 0.2 is the best uh, resolution to enable the cell clusters. You can increase the resolution. With the higher resolution, you get more cell clusters. So if we run, now we can use the plot function to see the cell clusters. Uh, the Naden show cell clusters at the same time we run to mark genes, CLDN5, a mark gene for endocellular cells and the PDPRC, a mark gene for immune cells in the lung. If we run, you can see we have uh, six cell clusters in this data set. I said in the beginning that uh, uh, this data set was purified missing chemical cells from uh, dissociated human fibrotic lung. So you can see cluster 5 uh, in brown color here, it's a very small canister express CLDN5. So because the cells are purified um, by phenocytometry, so no cells should be uh, contamination. And the canister 4 in purple color here, they are immune cells. So next we can run um, marker genes for fiberblast. So this is the function like in throughout when you use the feature plot. So we know uh, num is the mark for all the fibroblast. The same as the PDGFA is the mark for all the fibroblast. And also we know uh, CTHRC1 is the mark gene for, for Meyer fibroblast. If we run uh, this plot function, you can see uh, Fibroblast on the left side, they express high level LAM and the PDGFA. Um, this cluster cells express high level CTHRC1, so we know they are Meyer fibroblast. Then we can also plot mark genes for parasites and smooth muscle cells. DES is a mark for smooth muscle cells and the RGS5 is the mark for parasite. So let's run this plot function. You can see uh, two canals on the right hand side they are smooth muscle cells and the parasites. 
the cluster on the top express DES, so they are smooth muscle cells, and the cluster in the bottom express high level RGS5, so we know this cluster of cells are parasites. So now, use different MAC genes, we identify the cell clusters. Then we can run the uh, laden um, plot function again. So we have six uh, uh, clusters here. We know four and five are cell contamination during purification. Uh, they are endocellular cells and the immune cells. Cluster zero are non fiber blast and the cluster 1 are smooth muscle cells, cluster 3 are myofiber blast, and the cluster 2 are parasite. So we can name the cell cluster now as the fiber blast, smooth muscle cells, parasites, myofiber blast, immune cells, and uh, endocellular cells. So if we run new cluster names, then we can um, plot uh, the UMAP again, it's like uh, the DIM plot function in thread. You can see now we named the cells myofibroblast, fibroblast, immune cells, and the cellular cells, smooth muscle cells, and the parasites. So we finish the basic uh, analysis. In part one, we perform the uh, quantity control in part two we did uh, like uh, data normalization data scaling uh, dimensional reduction analysis for PCA and uh, UMAP then we can plot uh, the cell canasters uh, by random latent function we also name the cell canasters after we run the mark genes so let's have a look at the A data now. You can see we have 4,104 cells, uh, 1,420 highly variable genes in the data observations. This is uh, the metadata in SURAT analysis. We have the end genes, the counts, and we have the mitochondria percentage and the cell clusters. We have the variables and the unstructured um, data. We have the re dimensional reduction analysis PCA and the UMAP. So if we run the uh, A data observations, it uh, will show a table like uh, the metadata we showed in threat analysis. You can see the cell barcode, genes, gene count, total count, mitochondria, uh, DNA percentage, uh, and the cell clusters. Now we named the cell cluster already. So now we can save the data again. So I showed you how to do a uh, scampi analysis. If you watched my throughout uh, tutorial videos, it is very easy for you to understand how we perform scampi analysis in Python. So I'm going to stop here uh, for the basic uh, analysis. I will make more videos to demonstrate uh, scampi analysis in Python for single cell RNA sequencing data analysis. If you like my tutorials, please uh, subscribe my channel.